C. 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 Oh. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Hmm. Hell no. <laughs> she loves pooping. Let the rhythm take you over. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't get it. Do you enjoy being hurt? Do you? I know you smell the perfume. What else? The makeup on his shirt. Mm -hmm. you, don't you don't believe his stories. What no. you know? You know that they're all lies. Mm. Girl. Bad as you are, you stick around. And I just I don't know why. why. Cause if I was your man, baby, baby you never worry about what I do. I'd be coming home back to you every night, doing, doing you right. You're the type of woman <laughs> deserves good things. Fist full of diamonds, hand full of rings. Baby, you're a star. I just wanna show you you are. You should let me love you. Uh, let's mm. go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the words that one. Look at that, we can sing. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the No Chaser Podcast. I'm Timothy Dale Ghetto. I'm Ricky Shucks. And I'm Nikki Blades. <sighs> that was good. Yay. You feel, you feel good? I completed one. Yeah. Woo! 2020's my year. I, I was like, let's pick a song that Blades can Thank participate God. in. So we're walking around the damn store, and these two all of a sudden just start singing, <laughs> and I feel so left out. Well, you don't know. Okay, so this was the song. Okay, and to be fair... This is not something I would expect a lot of people to know. Let's not say where it's from. And in the comments, tell us if you know okay. where it's from. Nice. Uh, will you start? <clears throat> we like to drink, 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 drink. We like to drink, 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 drink. Now that happened. We like to drink, 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 drink. drink. <laughs> it, it goes on. And, and so that happens. And I like throw a little temper tantrum, right? I'm like, why do you guys always sing songs I don't know fucking words to? I mean, uh, it's, one, it's one word to that. I, I, I know. <laughs> you you could have caught there's on. Nothing, there's nothing worse than being the one not in the joke, right? Like, <laughs> well, too bad. You're going to be third wheeling for as long as you're here. I you know. Play. But now I know the words because there's only. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One word. Just keep on, uh, you know, getting higher with it. Uh, that was, uh, you know, and that's and that's a song for us because yeah. we, we like to drink. It is. Did you want to talk tequila? I would actually. <laughs> Let's do it. We've Rick been we've been taking we've been taking a break, and since we're clearly not sponsored by the tequila, you guys keep tagging us in. We right. switched it up on you guys. We had to switch it up. Uh, you know what? We're on a budget today because we got <laughs> Corlejos and Hypnotic. How you know they weren't trying to sponsor us, and now you trying to downplay? First off, Cor any type of liquor company that's trying to help me get drunk, right, Tim? Oh God. Okay, pour me a shot. Oh, where's it, your cup? Woman? First off, <laughs> quit that job. Don't talk to me like that. You got to pay. That costs money. First off, I'm not a woman. <laughs> Second of all, fuck you, Rick. Don't, I don't drink. That, that's hers. Oh, okay. I thought she was about to pour Rick a shot. I was yeah, like, right. What's Rick going to do? Look at it. Ooh. Double fist. Don't shame him for I that. I did. Because he thinks he's better than broke me. ass tequila. I know this is cheap ass tequila. It's like they're like, oh, they're, like greens they're, they're, they're like, which tequila do you want? And Rick points at one, and I was like, nah, let's just go with the Corlejos today. Everybody, clap your hands. So I feel like, are we gonna take this or not? I'm not gonna lie. Cheers. It's definitely not the classic. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. Uh huh. Have you seen that drinking game? Which one? Where they um they are all around a table and oh. you have to point and take the shot and if you make a face you have to double. Funny story is that little clip that went viral yeah. of that drinking game? Yeah. That's our homie. Yeah. Really? 
really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shout out David Alvarezzi. Yeah. Shout out David Alvarezzi and Jorge Munoz. And uh, who else was in it? David Alvarezzi's mom. <laughs> yeah, and their family. <laughs> um, it, what's funny about that tequila that we drink all the time, the Clase Azul that we always promote, I feel like we made that shit pop in. Fuck yeah. You did not. I feel like we did. <laughs> First off, we, yes. I think we made it a thing. Well, look, they were already a, a, a company. But I think we made it cool. I only drink that when I get bottle service at the club now, too. Mm -hmm. And you rarely see those bottles come out. But if you ask me what I want to drink, you better get me the bell. Let me tell you something. Those, they're everywhere. Everywhere. That, you want to be. You're welcome, Class A Azul. Y'all work with two chains, but y'all don't want to work with us? Okay. Shit. Most expensive. Is. They're like, yes. They're like, yeah. <laughs> Do you have hits? No. They're like, <laughs> duh, fool. Yeah. Pretty much. They soon, did, but did you see that episode that they did and they were hell like that poor guy? Oh. Oh, they kept clowning. Yeah, they kept the clowning edits. the guy. Yeah. We won't make fun of you. Here's the thing. Did you see that episode of um No. Okay, so on that show, uh uh what's it called? The uh, most expensive is. most expensive shit or whatever that yeah. Two Chains does. Um they went to like the class A Azul like uh the headquarters basically mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and it was bottles bro that oh. were like ten thousand dollars fucking 15, encrusted 20, yeah. in jewels and yeah. shit oh beautiful wild i um yeah. i was at a restaurant crazy that they started doing that after you after we put them on that. that's crazy i uh <laughs> i was at a restaurant recently i was i was in the bay and i was at the uh, a, a bar in the hotel and i was sipping the, the reposado the white with the blue and a dude was like oh you want to try the ultra you should try the ultra it's really smooth bro it's really good it was the it was the black bottle um that is shiny not the matte one oh, and i was like i was like yeah sure bro yeah let's try it let's try it and um he was like oh man it's so smooth yeah 300 dollars a shot you cool i'm like Shh, let's uh, save uh, that yeah. for another day <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's ex mm -mm. But then I was out with the homegirl and I did it. Oh my you did? God. I did it. I was, was like, it worth it? it? Okay, look, it was really smooth. It was tasty. It was smooth. It was great. I got to really be in a specific mood for that to yeah. spend $300. You got to pull on. out somebody yeah. else's black card. Man, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right, what's up, y'all? You know I love to stay fresh. I love smelling good, and I love to keep it really natural. You know what I'm saying? No crazy chemicals on my system or in my system. That's why I F with native deodorant products because look man it's all natural ingredients native deodorant is formulated without aluminum parabens or talc and it's also vegan and never tested on animals all right they got the ingredients you know native deodorant is made with ingredients you've heard of like coconut oil shea butter you wear deodorant all day every day shouldn't you be able to understand the ingredient list Okay, and they got some cracking ass, sexy ass scents. Over 10 cents, including their classic and rotating seasonals. You're guaranteed to find one you love. Now, me, I like that eucalyptus and mint. You know what I'm saying? Almost like I, I'm I'm a, I'm walking around like a, a mojito. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a whole sexy ass mojito walking around. You know. They also got crazy scents like coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, and cucumber mint, okay? They got something for everyone, all right? They come in they come in a variety of options for men, women, and even teens, and they got the unscented option with baking soda, free formula for those with sensitivities, okay? There's no risk to try, free shipping on every order, and Native offers 30-day free returns and exchanges in the USA. And if you're not convinced, guess what? Guess what? I got a special offer for y'all. Okay, all you got to do is go to nativedeodorant.com, use promo code NOCHASER during checkout, and you get 20% off your purchase, all right? That is nativedeodorant.com, promo code NOCHASER for 20% off. Off, I got you. Drinking expensive. It, it, it <laughs> oh my god! I went and decided to take myself out to eat at Roca. Um, it's a Japanese restaurant out in San Francisco. Really, really nice spot. So I went to the bar, and I had already been drinking, and I was drinking Classe Azul. And mind you, for the most part, I ain't got to pay for alcohol. Okay, I don't got to pay for Classe Azul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a different life. Oh, when I was like, oh, what am I gonna drink? Yeah. I've already been drinking Classe Azul. Whatever. Can I get it? the class A Azul? I was like, by the way, how much is your class A Azul? He's like, oh, it's $30. I said, 30, 30, 30 fucking, you know how many of these I just drank uh, for free? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> oh, excuse me, if there was a bill with my drink? <laughs> excuse, um, Weird. Said, somebody else is supposed to be paying for this. Hot girl privilege is something that is not addressed <laughs> enough. <laughs> yes, we are lucky. It is different. It, yeah, but I definitely know that. If I want to drink good, I better put my drinking money aside. Shit. Well, speaking of uh, lovely ladies, 
Um, today's guest is a lovely lady, mm-hmm. um, and I've known her on the internet for a long time, but I, we've never met in real life, have we? Have we? No, we have not. We met for the first time in real life today, and Ooh. I figure it would be interesting to have her on the podcast because, you know, there's a lot of things that I feel like I am um, ignorant to. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and I think let's have a conversation. Make some noise for activist, um, tweeter, um, just, we'll get into it. Make some noise for Blair Imani. Woo! <laughs> Tweeter. Tweeter. <laughs> Hi. First of all, you're, the outfit is fresh. Yes. Thank you. I knew I had to come correct because yes. I'm like, I'm with Timothy. He always got some fresh. Some I went to the up your life. cleaned my shoes off. Okay, I see. Okay. <laughs> I love. Puts her feet on the table. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize. Shoes check. Hello. Yes. Hey. Hey. Oh, zoom in on that. The Those whole are fly. Podcast, so. Yes, I was. I love the Spice Girls. Definitely dressed up as Scary Spice because I was the only brown girl where Thank I grew me. up. Uh, I was also a, a huge Spice Girls fan. Who was up. your favorite? I um. Everybody has a favorite. I wanted to be posh. Spice. Scary Spice was my favorite as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, then I like realized I grew up and I was like, oh wait, it's fucked up that she's Scary Spice because she's black. I, I <laughs> and I was just gonna say that, and I also. But you know what else somebody else did about that? Like where you remember something fondly and then you like grow up and you realize it's fucked up. Yeah. The Baja Men. Somebody said that song "Who Let the Dogs Out" was about ugly women being at the club, and I was like, I refuse to believe that. And I I'll continue enjoying the song. I, I, I makes sense. I believe that. Yeah. I live in denial. The party was Thank nice. The party was. But look, let's let's make it let's make it not as fucked up. Okay. It can be about ugly women and ugly men. Okay. <laughs> we, could, we could talk about pretty privilege more. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Hot I girl. Did, I didn't privilege. always have it. Okay, and I've taken full advantage of it. All hey, right? and that's great. Full and that's advantage. Great. And that's why I feel like you have a great personality, Nikki Blades, because you didn't have to deal. Oh, yeah. first of all, oh yes, she has a oh. book. Oh yes, she has a book. Making our way home. Okay, okay. Let's first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about Nikki Blades' hot girl privilege, and then, ah. and then we'll get into your book. I was gonna say, I think that's why you're lit as somebody who is hot and has a personality Thanks. because, um, you grew into it. Yeah. You feel me? People that are that get the hot girl, hot person privilege mm-hmm. growing up, um, usually don't really have personality because. They have to develop on. they get special treatment immediately just because they're attractive. My family was not gonna let you think you was cute. I did not grow up in the you cute family. They, I honestly feel like I've looked the same, but where I grew up played a big part on my confidence. <laughs> and let me tell you, when I got to college, I didn't realize people liked curly hair or no. brown skin, or I had no idea that being athletic was really attractive because I grew up where nobody gave a fuck about it. So yes, and then when I realized that I was pretty, I always wanted to model though. Like I always, I was tall and lanky. I always wanted to do that. So <laughs> when sports were done, I was like, cool. Went into that world and busted my ass and that is one judgy, hard, hard, World. Well, speaking of getting judged, Blair Imani, Ooh. what is this book about? So this book is about like... <laughs> That's a transition. <laughs> this book is about all the missing parts of black history. Like, mm. I feel like black history in the United States as it's tossed to us is like slavery, okay, afros, and civil rights. Obama, the end. And it's like, yeah, yeah, Martin Luther King with the Afros and civil rights. But then that's pretty much it. And it's like, but what else happened? And I feel like the story that I had growing up didn't really match up. And like, we were still doing things like we were around, you know, like it wasn't like we disappeared from the face of the earth, but it felt like that from a history context. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited about it because like, you know, history can be really heavy, but I wanted to make it the book illustrated. I wanted to make it vibrant. I wanted to be like something approachable because, you know, history books you know, they're usually like this thick and not that interesting. Um, and as a historian, I recognize that. And I wanted to make it more engaging. See, I, and I, that's why I thought it'd be interesting to have you on because, you know, you are a, a complex individual. You feel me? Because uh, you are identify as a uh, queer and also you are a Muslim and also you are a um pretty light-skinned black girl all right so it's a lot going on right there, there is. Right? and i didn't realize how light-skinned i was until very recently I, I be, like i've been new but recently <laughs> i met sinbad the comedian remember him yeah, everybody yeah. thinks that he played a genie but he didn't that was Shaq. people are confused but he dressed like a genie anyway yeah. i Mandela took a selfie yeah. with him yeah. and i was like i took a selfie look at the selfie was, we're you, the you same light, color like, oh, i was oh. like what the hell <laughs> well, oh you're not lighter than sinbad <laughs> yeah, I was no, like, oh, shit. we're the same but he said that we're not light skinned black we are dark white and I, I felt <laughs> oh. I felt that you know that made me feel like empowered that's hilarious oh. dark white so okay so um 
So I got questions, right? Okay. Let's go. Um, because I feel like, look, I just as 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 people look, can I tell you one time I got into some shit one time with Muslim Twitter Ooh. because I said some shit that I didn't know was was inappropriate. Do you want to revisit it? I will revisit it because and and then and then we'll get into it, all right? Because I feel like um, if there's anybody to educate me about this, it's you, right? Um, so there was a lady who I used to canoodle with. Um, back in the day, who who was who was Muslim? She was a hijabi girl. She wore hijab, and I remember one time, uh, someone who I was homies with on Twitter was tweeting about how how pretty like, um, hijabis like girls were, and I was like, yeah, you know what? I used to talk to one, and I remember. Um, when I first met her, all I seen was hijab and ass, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so apparently. You're not supposed to talk about women who wear hijab like that. Like, the reason they cover up is because they're not even trying to be seen in any type of sexual light, all right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm like, I didn't know that. I yeah. was like... You're like equal opportunity. I, I was talking about non-hijabis, hijabis, hijabis right. yeah. urbanistas, let's go. I was saying, yeah. yo, I, I seen a girl with a hijab. She was beautiful. She had ass. Like, I didn't know that was a wrong thing, yeah. right? But let me tell you something, bro hijabi muslim twitter you don't want to mess with them went in on me yeah. i was up for an hour talking to people like and they text so fast <laughs> like they be tweeting like they hit send and you hit refresh and it's four more tweets you're like what are you doing i had no idea i was getting retweeted i was like look what this dude is talking about look how he's dis disrespecting our women like they got some intercultural and then they're like you know like clown on you in somali and then they clown on you in arabic like you just and you're like google like, translate like, please help sorry, you know, yeah, it's I'm not sorry. a fair battle <laughs> Uh, I, translator I didn't know all right so um so look okay so from 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 your perspective where did i go wrong well i think that like you know it's the perception that maybe like talking to women about women that way in general yeah is something that you know is i mean but that's kind of like that's something that's in the air you know what i mean yeah. like how do you approach women in general but then as far as women who wear hijab like it's really interesting because i notice on the west coast there's less education about that but like yeah. on the east coast like in new york people tend to know like more about like judaism and know about more about islam to the point where i didn't get catcalled at all in the mm. hijab in new york but if i'd be going like to and from the barber and i didn't have my head covered hey girl how you do you know that whole thing right. to the point where my friends started wearing a headscarf just to get on the train and get to work because they were like been seen as muslim and it's not because they were more respected it's because they think we don't speak english and that oh. we're married so like they're like well it's a losing game you know what i mean interesting so i don't think that it's a matter of like you just because you talk about somebody's ass or you talk about somebody's hijab it doesn't mean you respect them less yeah. but um i think that sometimes people virtue signal and then they go oh i can come after you now because you've said my identity group so mm. i'm like i have a stake in this but i don't necessarily mean i don't i don't necessarily think it means that you're treating people differently but other folks are going to have different opinions of yeah. course but i think the hijab is just something that's very sensitive because even halima aden who is an amazing somali model who was i think she the first time she did a runway show was in yeezy's uh kanye west she like, was also the first model to wear a swimsuit in sports Illustrated. yeah i was about to talk about that because mm. so people were like um and she just was on the cover of essence which is yeah. dope she's the first hijabi to be in mm -hmm. essence um but people were pissed that, like some folks are like yay representation other folks are like why are you on sports illustrated that's right. like a you know that's something for you know men to ogle women and it's you know mm. you know put women down but i grew up in a household where it was like if a woman or anybody for that matter is using their body and wants to do it in a way that is on their terms mm. that's good for them like i told my mom like when i was younger i was like mom what if i was in playboy you know like try to like startle mm. her she was like do playboy just don't do hustler because that's that's trashy <laughs> <laughs> that's fact. she's like just have some standards you know and so um but i think it's evolving i think the more folks we see in the media, the more folks that we see like in hijab just living their lives, um, no matter how they're like covering themselves or not, the more it's going to come up. And so right. I think it's healthy. It just kind of shows like cultures coming together. And yeah. I think that's what America is about. I mean, I think that I mean, that's facts, because I mean, like growing up, I mean, look, to be completely honest, before I started like talking to that girl, like I didn't even really know anything about like hijabs and like hijabi like women or anything. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, I didn't even know that's what they were called. You know what I'm saying? Until I started talking to that girl. Yeah. So, um, I mean, for you, um, when did you start like you didn't were you raised in that or OK, how did you get into that? 
So, well, actually, so I'm an activist. Um, well, I'm a historian now because people try to come after activists, but nobody's coming after historians. So I'm a historian now. Um, Got to make that distinction in 2020. But um, <laughs> they mad. They mad if you woke. Yeah. But if you educated, they're like, oh, shit. Yeah, like, whatever. Like, you got more facts than I do. I'm not coming for you next. Yeah. And nobody's trying to, like, disappear historians. Like, right. you know, right. like, we're fine. We're not to that point. You know, <laughs> knock on wood. Strategic. But, um, so when I started, like, organizing meetings and stuff, we'd be trying to, like, have a place to organize that wasn't going to be like constantly like crashed by the police or like just you know surveilled and harassed and stuff and i think that a lot of the christian churches just didn't want the heat you know they're already black southern churches they've already gone through that and they're still going through it um but the mosque they were like we're already dealing with stuff just come in and organize with us like you know they were just really like open arms and i think it was kind of this idea that if one community is going through it we're all going to go through it together um so as we were doing black lives matter protests um in louisiana because that's where i went to school um the local mosque there just became a really open space and like you know then i was spending a ton of time at the mosque and i was like well let me just pick up this quran and check this out <laughs> uh, and i started Which reading it <laughs> yeah and it was it really resonated with me and i think that it helped me like get close to god in a way that i wasn't able to access before um and i think that like as human beings like whether we have like a higher power that's like named as like god or yahweh or allah or just like energy or we live in karma like i think that's a healthy thing because it takes us outside of ourselves and let us just like look at the world from a bigger perspective so um that's how i got close to closer to god but it was so funny because immediately after I converted, I was like, OK, well, how am I going to find a man if I'm always covered up? Like, I was like, really? Like, I wasn't suddenly like not just a regular like, person. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. yeah like, how do I adapt? What am I going to do? Like, you know, I went to Gap and I got all these like really ugly, but very like covered clothes because I was like, I didn't understand Why are you this. Because that's hilarious. Yeah. No, I was. I went Gap okay. and ugly. Yeah, I made the joke. <laughs> I made the joke in um, one of the schools I spoke at in Boston that, you know, like when I converted to Islam, it was hilarious because even though I stopped eating Bacon, I went ham in terms of like trying to Bars. really get into it. Thank you. Um, and, you know, I just didn't really know how I fit into it. So I was like so hardcore. Like I was like, I'm like, you know, you only gonna see my ankles on occasion. Like, you know, like I was really extra about it. And then four days after that, I met my current partner, Akeem Omar Ali, um, who grew up Muslim, who but doesn't practice today. And um, he was like, chill out. Like, you know, you don't have to do all this stuff. You know, like you can like figure out how you fit into Islam. And that's the work that I do now. I work with this group called Muslims for Progressive Values. Mm. Just this idea that like you could be Muslim and yourself and chill, you know, like because we don't look at Christians like how many times you go into church. Like most Christians we know, maybe they go on Easter if they're real hardcore. Yeah. They'll like, you know, they go on Easter, but they always go on Christmas. Let's chill. But we look at Muslims as like, well, if you're Muslim, you definitely pray five times a day. You definitely right. don't. You're like, you know, you got all your P's and Q's. And then hijabis, we look at hijabis like, oh, my gosh, like even myself being a hijabi and being progressive. I saw this um, Muslim woman at the casino in um in Las Vegas, mind you, I'm walking through the casino, mm. but I see her and I was like, I'm telling God, you know, like, <laughs> what you doing in here with me? You know what I mean? You know, and so it was one of those things where the the grass isn't greener always, but also you're not holier than somebody else just because you decide to mm -hmm. follow a path. And that's like with anything. But I think that we can really get in our own heads in terms of like, this is what I know Islam to look like, so I'm going to copy it. But now I'm, I'm way more laid back. Well, you know, one of the first things that you said you identify as queer. Mm -hmm. Now, in the community, there's so many different ways and things to identify with. So in your definition, what is queer? So I usually say queer to people. I'm bisexual, but I usually say queer to people if I like don't feel like explaining it. Because it's one of those things like if you tell somebody you work in tech. Did you just? Uh, it's funny because you're asking her to I'm explain asking her it. I'm no, like, I'm going to explain it today because we have the podcast. <laughs> no, but if, I mean, like, it's one of those things where like you, your uncle asks you, like, what do you do? And you're like, I work in tech. And he goes, oh, cool. Because, yeah. you know, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So like, if you tell somebody that you're queer, they're like, OK, you're not straight. I got it. You know, yeah. um, I agree. but uh, I'm bisexual. And so it, I really am very selective about how I call myself and where and when. Um, but queer, it's being more of an umbrella term, more inclusive. But um, when I came out to my family as queer, they were freaked out because Akeem, they were like, well, where did he go? <laughs> and I'm like, y'all, uh -huh. like the only type of queer isn't lesbian, you know, like yeah. I'm bisexual, which means, you know, I was like, remember Sylvia? Oh, I <laughs> dated her. She was, oh, OK. Remember her? Oh, yeah. And so um, it's funny because re recently one of my cousins who's not as woke she was talking to me and my dad was in earshot and she goes well uh why are you keep calling yourself 
bisexual. I'm like listening to myself in the headphones and it actually sounds like her. So it freaked me out. <laughs> uh, why are you calling yourself bisexual if you're in a relationship with a man? And I was like, well, that's exactly what that means. <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, and, like I can't be with like, both at well, the same time. <laughs> yeah, she goes, well, you can't. It's polyamory, but that's more. Um, but I was like, uh, and then before I could even interject, like my she goes, and you didn't even date women. And my dad goes, yes, yeah, she did. You might not remember, but she dated this nice girl named Sylvia. <laughs> and, then, and I was like, thanks, dad. My dad's like 70 years old, but he's like on the wave, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but I just really think it's important for you to be your full self at all times, if you're able to, because not a, everybody has that privilege. And I think if you do have that privilege, you owe it to other people to be your full self. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, so, you know, I, I grew up uh, going to Christian school, right? So, and, and, I've, and I've told the story. <laughs> I was gonna say I've told the story of like me being like, "Hey, what about gay Christians?" And then my my Bible teacher being like, "Tim, are you gay?" So I mean, <laughs> and I'm like, "No, I'm just trying to. I'm, I want people to be loved." Yeah. Uh. So so for you and I, I'm not familiar with like with like Muslim teachings and stuff. Like, um, is that allowed? Uh, everybody <laughs> asked me that, and actually the other day I'm gonna read from my phone really Please, quickly. Please. Yeah. So the other day somebody reached out to me, and I say reached out because you know, like reach out somebody. You, no, they were like coming for me in my DMs. Oh, that's different. And they like said <laughs> your by, but like not your like why. Oh, oh, they, oh they already yes. lose. Okay. They yeah. automatically lose. Question like five question marks. Oh lord, like, your by, and I was like, you're a complete stranger. <laughs> yeah. Number one, you cannot be Muslim and bisexual. I don't know who told you that, dude. And then like a bunch of like cry face emojis. And I was like, God said it's fine. Go to bed. Yeah. yeah. Facts. And people were like, oh my God, queen, go off. Because, you know, at the, at the end of the day, this is what I believe. You know, I believe that Allah loves all of his creations. Mm -hmm. I actually don't believe Allah uses, you know, God is beyond gender, but we'll use he, him pronouns here for like yeah. brevity. Yeah. Um, but I feel like, you know, God creates people to love who you know just to be loved and to like be themselves and to be in service of other people but there's a story in the bible and in the quran and in the torah called sodom and gomorrah or mm. prophet Lut, and we all everybody oh yeah you know you've probably been called a sodomite by somebody old you know but <laughs> it's this idea of god uh casting out this city for being sinful and there's a lot of um different interpretations on what that sin was um i'm of the belief that the sin wasn't same gender loving relationships but that's what's criminalized because of this story and the way it's interpreted so i actually did a ted talk recently where i talked about how um you can be queer muslim and like not have any conflict because there's nothing in the quran that says like these relationships are not allowed there's nothing that says like same gender love is not allowed there's nothing that say um that being transgender is not allowed but everything else in the quran that is not allowed is real clear like it's mentioned like 50 11 times you know yeah, what i mean right. so i'd be like i don't feel like a law would want us to adhere to something and only mention it like really vaguely yeah. covered under a bunch of poetry and then only like <laughs> interpreted like 300 years later like that doesn't make sense to yeah. me yeah. and islam makes a lot of sense to me other you know other than that so that just doesn't fit in so when i was converting i didn't feel like there was any kind of conflict i was like okay i'm bisexual and now i'm a bisexual muslim yeah. Yeah. okay so you would already identify before yeah conversion. i was like really out and then um what ended up happening so uh you might remember the pulse shooting that happened in 2016 where the, the orlando nightclub mm -hmm. yeah was shot up um and i'm actually a close friend with brandon um who uh was a survivor of that incident oh, but after that happened there was this kind of conversation that y'all probably remember that was like muslims versus gays and like I was like, oh, I'm both of these things. Like, where do I fit in? And so I felt more closeted because of that. Cause I was just like, okay, I just started my job. You know, like I'm black and Muslim already and gay, but like I'm in a relationship with a man. I'll just like kind of closet myself. And that was the first time in my life I had ever been closeted. Cause I've always been very out about who I am. Um, but recently I, I realized like, well, actually how I came out was I was on Fox News. Um, I was on the Tucker Carlson Tonight Show. Okay. <clears throat> we won't talk about how that turned, but you know, I was like, I could conquer this, whatever. I had just spent the past year working at Planned Parenthood. So I was like this fool, whatever, you know, with his bowl cut. Um, and so I go on the show and at some point he's trying to correct me. Um, I was saying, you know, I was talking about how people need safe spaces to like live and breathe. It's like a sensible thing, but I was on Fox News. So no, no argument was going to be made. I was naive anyway. So I say black people need safe spaces to be free from hate crimes. LGBT people need space safe spaces to be free from hate violence and Muslims need safe space and before I could even like finish he goes excuse me 
he didn't say that he's rude you're not here to speak on behalf of black people and lgbt people and i was like well actually because i'm a scorpio i was like well actually i'm a black queer muslim woman and then i was like oh shit girl you just came on national television oh, <laughs> so, on accident yeah and so that's how it happened because i think i was pretty content like being out to my friends and like i had done like an article about being a queer muslim for one of my friends um that was in nylon but i wasn't like rah rah i'm out like i am today yeah. wrapped up in like a rainbow hijab um <laughs> which I ended up doing like the year after yeah. but since then it was it's been pretty cool like people reach out to me and I really feel like I'm in a really unique position to be able to talk to different about different things and some people reach out to me especially after like I post like hate messages and people are like oh my gosh like thank you for doing what you do I'm a bisexual Muslim I don't know if I can be out yet I don't know how to tell my parents mm. but you make me see that I can be out one day. And I think that's important because like in our lives, like what we do, like, you know, maybe there's a probably a lot of like young Asian rappers who wanted to be out there and then saw you and were like, oh, I can do this. You know, like I don't have to be, I don't have to try to be black. Like I can just be myself, be in my culture and be part of this music. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's all stories that we have like that. Um, so that's really what I'm about now is trying to like bring people together. Um, and if you can do it by living your life, like that's super easy. Muslims aren't allowed to drink. Is that a sin? Uh, so okay. So I recently started going to AA. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> oh, this is bad. Y'all have to hide oh, it. Y'all have to hide oh, it. Oh, I'm real good oh, now. Oh goddamn boy! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> damn. That, that's why she agreed to come on the podcast. <laughs> oh hell! Like, we had took a drink. A, we, oh no, we took a shot before we started. This no, it's damn, good. It's good. Tim, you didn't send over to part damn. of the great part of going to AA is that you like develop the skill set to be around alcohol right. and not feel like. I need alcohol. You know what I mean? But um, but it got to the point where before I speak, like I do a lot of talking around the country. Right. But before I would speak, the re like <laughs> my rock bottom was I was about to speak at Tom's for their like LGBT thing. And I was like uh, gargling with Tangeray before <laughs> the event. And I was like, girl, oh, get it together. Really? And so I start going to AA. I'm in a hijab. And like some of the ladies were like, why do you even drink? You're Muslim. And I was like, you're not helpful. You know what I mean? <laughs> First off, take your judgment ass right. back over there. Back right? Here. Like, I'm doing something about it. You know? I'm doing something. I'm getting it sorted out. All right, we see it too. You know, I got my little tokens out there in, the, in uh, on my purse. But I really enjoy going. But basically, you know, alcoholism runs in my family. Mm. And I was like, the you know, I'm like, I did speech and debate. I could debate somebody to the day ends about like how Muslims can drink. And I do believe that there is a, like allowance for Muslims to drink. Okay. And so like, but the way I was talking about it just became harmful to me because I was like, so you can get drunk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was like, I'm not oh, praying yeah. drunk, so it's fine, you know? <laughs> and like, like that might man, work. My relationship, we good, right? Alcohol you know? in on my breath when I'm talking to him. You know, <laughs> right? Like, I'm, I'm not, not talking to God drunk, so I'm never drink, you know? Uh, or it got to the point too where I would be like, you know, shit face and I'd be like, I'm not drunk, I'm Muslim. I'd be like, <laughs> come on, that's when most of my conversations come in. I say, all right, listen here. Okay. <laughs> you need to help me. But I feel really good about my sobriety now. You know, I've been sobriety, uh, sobriety. I've been sober since October 2nd. And um, Elton John really inspired me to be sober. I haven't met him, but that would be dope if you're listening, Elton. Um, <laughs> He's definitely listening. <laughs> We that would be dope. Maybe he listens to random shit, you know? No. Uh, but anyway, so I was at uh, the concert in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, where what? I saw you were recently. Oh, shit. Yeah, and so I was in Saskatoon, and I was at the concert, and he starts talking about his sobriety, and I'm sitting there with, like, a, a Bloody Mary in my hand, and I was like, <laughs> you know, I should really, this is a sign, you know? Um, but anyway, no, Muslims, I think, can drink. This Muslim can't drink, because this Muslim's an alcoholic, oh, like, right. and she's working on it. Oh, but real quick, the Bloody Marys in Canada are, are way tastier. They're tastier. really good. They're called, they're called Caesar. Caesar. Yeah. They're way better. They use Clamato instead of tomato juice. That's a little like bit sweeter. Michelada. So good. And then if you go to this place in uh, Vancouver called Fanny Bay Oyster House, uh -huh. they'll put a little oyster on top of it. Mm. Oh, my gosh. So good. So I'm going to have to go and just have the Clamato. Oh, so y'all are allowed to eat oysters? Yeah. No, I'm just Every, <laughs> everything from the sea is halal. Just now, no ham. I'm No ham. Okay, no pork. I'm just learning what today. What if it's a water pig? What the heck is that? <laughs> the ones that be at the beaches that bite the Instagram models on the ass. Oh my gosh. The wild boars we hear yeah. about all the time. No, I'm over like, what but, is going so, on? The thing is, if you don't know if you're eating pork or not, so like, I'm black. There's a lot of cookouts. There's a lot of dishonest aunties who are not really happy that you That's left Jesus, I mean. even though we believe in is Jesus. Is there chitlins in this pudding? You know, like, what the heck? <laughs> Hello, <Pudding. laughs> And so, 
<laughs> we don't eat pudding after Bill Cosby. Wants to. Anyway. <laughs> oh, oh shit, we just getting rid of everything now. No, and so uh, and we healthier for it. But no, so like one of my aunties, she was like, um, I was like, is this pork? And she was like, Well, I heard if I don't tell you, you could eat it. And I was oh, like, Oh, that is true. <laughs> and so the thing that people say uh-huh. is, I, I did this tweet. I was like, being black and Muslim means saying Bismillah before you eat when he's in the name of God, which like uh-huh. kind of clears you. But also, <laughs> if you're like starving, you know, like if there's like you know when I went to Kenya for example there wasn't like a lot of food variety and there was pork on the Mm -hmm. table so I had pork because I'm not gonna be like hey like you know tribal members who are like elders in the tribe I'm Muslim like it was one of the things of respect and it's also the only thing to eat at that time um but I have friends who like will hold their breath passing the deli aisle because they're like so intense about (laughs) not eating pork but I think you know give Islam a couple more years and we'll be like Jews we're like Jews will like they'll eat pork like you have folks who are like they call it Jewish where they're like Jewish (laughs) but they're like not all the way Jewish so they're not super adherent but Islam is a relatively young religion in terms of the Abrahamic ones so Mm -hmm. I think give us a little bit more time and that'll ease up but um you talk to my you know like my father-in-law he about it he'll go all day about how pork is bad for you right. how you find things in pork like but one thing that happened was um the swine flu epidemic right. uh when that hit um uh, i think indonesia none of the muslims were getting sick none of the muslims were eating pork a lot of muslims out there a lot of muslims out there yeah. like i have a lot of stands in indonesia mm. like it's 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 lit like singapore indonesia malaysia yeah yeah, yeah. my mentor you know, is from malaysia really mm-hmm. i try to practice uh freeganism what is it? That is, you're vegan until, unless the food is free. Then you, oh, I like Then you eat that. whatever is out there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, so the one of the things that was difficult for me when I was converting was trying to figure out, like, what is off the table? Because, like, pork, off the table. Like, people who don't agree with me being, like, a queer Muslim will be like, but at least you don't eat pork. Like, you know, or, like, <laughs> folks who... the silver lining somewhere folks, with her. <laughs> folks who do agree, like, my really progressive friends, you I was... Eat t- this, but... No, don't eat, don't eat that. that. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna drink. I know you're not. But that I'm was drink good. Like that. No, have one for me. He don't. Uh, he don't drink either. So you're fine. Oh, okay. What's up, woke yeah. black folks? Not drinking. <laughs> right. uh, well, we're Asian. The we're white like, oh. man's fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, but fuck whitey is what we say <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> so I'm gonna drink your drink, but fuck you. <laughs> No, but um, I was talking about eating pastrami, and for folks who know, mm. pastrami is made of beef, and my folks on Twitter, they're not in the know about ah. the deli items, so like, even my friends who are like super liberal, mm. like this one queer kid from New York, he messaged me on Instagram, he's like, I love you and everything you do, like, you're super amazing, you're empowering, but why are you eating pork? And I was like, I'm not eating pork, it's beef, oh my God, and so like, <laughs> he messaged me all the time now, he'll be like, uh, my pastrami, like, hating ass was out here, like, <laughs> he's so, like, yes, I got my joke, but uh no but like i didn't know if Al- i still don't know if alligator is halal or not but i'm from louisiana we eat fried alligator every now and again I mean, um so what makes it it's not in the sea but it is in water yeah so right? what, yeah, yeah what makes so, what so makes i'm it? really i'm really not in the know i have so i always thought it was how it was prepared but if it's like sometimes it's how it's prepared yeah. okay. sometimes a Jewish it's like person told me it had to be blessed by a rabbi and then a Muslim person might say it has to be blessed by an imam. Mm. It might have to be done in a certain humane way. But it's ultimately cleaner food. Okay. And so the interesting thing, though, in New York, if you come up to the bodega, <laughs> excuse me, and it's a, you know, a Muslim bodega yeah. and you come up in a hijab, you will get some nice food. But like yeah. one time I showed up to the bodega and they definitely gave me pork when I asked for beef. And really? I was like, oh. brother, what are you doing? And he was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I was oh like, you God. just fucking people up out yeah. here. You know? Wow. So he had yeah. hidden agenda. Like, yeah, have your pork. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, I'm actually Muslim. Oh, I'm so sorry, sister. Don't eat that. You know? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, ah. <laughs> So, but, yeah. what is the rule in terms of uh, sex before marriage? Uh, okay. Well, I'm of the mindset that <laughs> All right. break it down, break it down for us. You know, it's really complex. So somebody asked me about this. They were like, "So Blair, like I've been looking to you for like." Da-da-da. I'm like, first of all, I'm not. You know, I'm a teacher of Black history, of queer history, um, of women's history. I'm not a teacher of Islam. I feel like that's a personal relationship you have to have, you have, to have with God. Um, there is something that you do called a nikah um, when you before you get married. And I made the joke with my friend the other day. I was like, when I get married to my partner, it's going to be called a nigga because we're black. <laughs> and she laughed for days. But um, no, so like you can take your vows and it has it's not necessarily the same way as it is in Christian marriage where it's an exchange of property, but it's kind of like souls coming together. And so, like, you know, guys will try to get you in the sack or women try to get you in the sack by being like, let's just take our nikah here. Oh. And like, let's get married. And then be like, just kidding. Because, like, in Islam, there's so much there's a lot of women's rights. Like, there's a whole yeah. chapter on women's rights. Um, 
And so there's like this uh, belief that if you want to get a divorce, you could just be like, I want a divorce and then you're divorced. And so like, Oofo. you know, oh. you know, there could be some lesbian Muslims just running around having the best time of their life, not sinning technically. Right. So it's really up to you. You know, personally, I'm having sex before marriage. Life is short. It's great sex. Are we out here. Um, and like, but it's also because I grew up in this very feminist household where, I, you know, I got kicked out of Catholic school because I was talking about premarital sex. And I was like, well, it was invented by men to control people with vaginas and, da, 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 da. and they were like, Blair. Mm-hmm. What the heck? And now I'm Muslim, so like, look at what they did. <laughs> look, <laughs> I, you just put blame all right there. I, it's I, your fault, by the way. I completely agree because I feel like you know I went to a Christian school and then I went to a Catholic school for a year, and that's what really kind of opened my mind up to uh, all these different people who believe in the same God, but then we got all these different rules, right? Yeah, so rules. Of, yeah, of course the rules are not coming like, from God. How many Protestant churches are there? Like, exactly. My, you don't really figure out what it's about until you try to have a funeral for grandma and grandma with Methodist, but it's like a Presbyterian minister yes. and like, whoo! Let me just tell you, from the outside, looking at all of y'all guys' stuff, it's confusing. <laughs> it is. I didn't grow up in a religious household. I was told, you can figure it out on your own. Lucky. Like, <laughs> my, parents, my, my parents, you know, at one point in time, I guess my mom was... Um, they don't celebrate any holidays. Jovah Hope was with Yes, at one point in time. And she was like, what is this? Yeah. I want out. And so she, <laughs> she, she left. She, so she left. And then, I don't get Christmas? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know, and my mom was like, that wasn't even my choice. It was put upon me. So my parents decided that uh, my brother, sister, and I could go into whatever we wanted to learn about as much as possible. They literally told us, like, go into all of it and you figure out when you're ready to figure it out because until you don't, you're going to be fucking up. They were like, you're going to fuck up. Yeah. You're going to go into one of these things. You're going to mess up all the time. You're going to feel really bad and you're not gonna you're just gonna be so confused go test some things out when you're ready accept it in and go but when you brought up like seven different names i'm like what who what yes. are you talking about what story yeah is there's this? like hella different i actually sometimes describe myself as a protestant muslim and they're like oh i get it like if you look at like the way that we look at islam is kind of how we look at catholicism like it's super conservative you know like there's lots of rules there's a lot of people like there's the imams who are like pulling strings there's the scholars you can't really have a lot of different say but then like we look at like an you know episcopalian like they're just chilling you know Mm -hmm. and so in that way that's kind of my understanding of islam it's very much a direct relationship with god and not necessarily having to go through a priest Mm -hmm. or having to go through an imam is what we call it i feel you man like Mm -hmm. like completely because when i was uh going to that catholic school and it was i was talking to people who were uh, coptic orthodox and like (laughs) all types of really og yeah and they had all these specific rules i'm like man look God don't care if I get a little premarital sex in, man. He really, he really, there was an episode of South Park specifically where it cracked me up because it was like everybody was in hell. It was a dude with a with a with a clipboard. He was like, "All right, well, um, Catholics over here, murderers over here, everybody, <laughs> Lawyers, yeah. Yeah, everyone." And then uh, everyone's like, "Well, who got it right?" And he was like, mm, "The Mormons." Like, oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> uh, but speaking of speaking of um, Mormonism, there have you ever heard of soaking? The term soaking, <laughs> right? So there, you know, a, a premarital sex is is a no go in Mormonism, right? But there's a thing called soaking, where under a technicality, you can insert yourself, your peen into the vagine, and don't move, <laughs> and you can just chill, like, and just plank on her. You know what I'm saying? And that's and soaking that thing, girl. And, and, that's what God wants. And that's technically <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay. All these loopholes, man. I remember. So I went to a Catholic school for a little bit because my dad and his family, they're Catholic. My mom was like, nah, we're Christian. I was like, okay. So I go there. My mom's very adamant with the people. He is not Catholic. (laughs) And I'm like, why do you care so much? Whatever. But on Wednesdays, we had to go across the street to the church to go to mass. And then you get in line and you get your grape juice and your cracker. The (laughs) The the body. Yeah, exactly. The Cheez-Its. Yeah. I've never experienced any of it. (laughs) They wouldn't make me stand to the side. Oh, I, I couldn't do it. So I'm like, then why can't I go here? Why can't I be there? Then I realized my dad's paying tuition. So y'all can mm. take y'all can take my money, but I can't have a damn it just, cracker. It seems so <laughs> like so judgmental and all of I mean, I feel like there's a lot of judgment past. Again, outside looking in, it's very confusing because isn't it supposed to be all accepting and all these things and just the 
whatever I've pulled from it, like you said, your relationship and however you decide to describe Mm -hmm. it, it's your relationship and it's supposed to be like a lot more love. But all I've seen is a whole lot of judgment from every single one of them. You know, I really thought when I converted to Islam, like, you know, I'm reading about how like, you know, there's this surah that talks about or hadith that talks about how Prophet Muhammad says, you know, like the black man is no higher than the white man, is no higher than the yellow man, is no higher than the red man. And I was like, wow, this is really great. When I go to the mosque, there's going to be no racism. (laughs) And like, I don't deal with racism at the mosque because people think I'm Arab. But like, my darker sisters like sometimes they won't want to pray next to somebody who's brown skin and it's really messed up or like um but what i found when i was in louisiana specifically was that we were also under attack that we were just like what's up fam like let's just hang on to each other Mm -hmm. and have a family but when you get to a place that's more liberated or it's less um less oppressive to the muslims there then people start getting real picky about who they want to sit next to and i think it's um it's really unfortunate but i think in all religion there's judgment because you have the people who need it you don't need the spirit the most who are at that church yeah. uh, or at the mosque or at the temple. And maybe they don't have control over something in their life. So they're trying to control other people. I think the media also, again, for somebody who's not very much in uh, religion, it you have its own paintings of what it is. Like you can go and watch a black film and, you know, you think everybody's just jumping up and down. And I couldn't tell you what. Lots of fun. You know, it looks oh, like it's, are. Yeah, it looks like it's lit. Then you go and you watch another. You see something else and it's like very conservative. Everybody's fighting over sitting in the front. There's very much. Oh, that's so-and-so's family. You can't walk past so-and-so's family. And you and all I've ever witnessed was judgment. Yeah. So I think that's what's always pushed me away from most of it. And it's interesting when the conversations come up because I'm like, yo, I know a whole lot of people who claim to be something and we at the same functions doing the same mm-hmm. fucked up yeah. stuff. Uh-huh. And guess what? You in trouble because yeah. I don't know who I'm answering to. We already got to understand. It. I'm going to talk to you later. Yeah. But the rest of y'all. It's, it's lots of conditions in it. It's yeah. conditional love. It's if you do all the things they want you to do, uh-huh. then you experience that that oneness, that togetherness, okay. all that but stuff. But I think but if you the thing... Oh, sorry. Fear, hmm. Yeah. I think the thing that I've come to, like, as in my evolution, because I'm, like, constantly challenged by, like, Muslims every day or, like, non-Muslims, people who are confused, people just mad and have extra time yeah. and need to fold their fucking laundry but are in my DMs instead. Yeah. Um, that, like, you know, I'm so grateful I don't answer to other human beings in terms of my spirit and my right. salvation. Like, I don't answer to another human being. I answer to God. Mm-hmm. You're not God. So I understand why you're in my yeah. business. And that's really where I draw the line. And I feel like it's... It's been difficult because I don't have community all the time. Like, I can't go to the mosque and be like, you know, like, I definitely know you're not homophobic. What's up? You know, I mean, some spaces it's like that, like with um, Muslims for Progressive Values, for example. But those spaces are unfortunately rare. But I'm also really grateful that I know where people stand in terms of who I am because I don't want snakes. You know what I mean? No frauds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 2020. 2020. No frauds. 2020. Um, In terms of... uh, uh, a, a black church. I got taken to a black church in high school, um, and uh, and I was like, not gonna lie, like in my head, I was like, the homies taking me to a black church. I'm about to meet some cute ass girls, right? This was my <laughs> who can sing? this was my thought process. Who can who can sing, <laughs> and who have pent up frustration. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to church for all the wrong uh, yeah, like, facts but in my, i'm yeah. like i already know jesus take me to the deal let's, let's go meet some people right <laughs> so we get there it's a seven day adventist thing it's on saturday and and here's the thing if you don't know nikki blades know. um that is a all male black church oh i had that's not what you was expecting not at all god was like surprise yeah for real uh-huh, you try to get around me on this one <laughs> yeah facts so i get there i'm looking at her like hmm this is not what I signed up for, right? But the funny shit about it was um, I'm in there and the dude's giving his sermon. It was a great sermon. It was great. And, um, and you know, of course, <clears throat> you know, he was uh, doing like, you know, um, w- sh- saying stuff where you uh, interact. You know what Crowd I'm saying? Participation. Crowd participation <laughs> was like lean to your neighbor and say, neighbor, um, you know, are you doing good? Today? Are you doing good today? I love you. Blah blah blah. Right. So at one point, he starts preaching about the the issues with black men in society and the issues that they have and what they need to fix about each other. Right. I'm the only not black man there. So at one point, <laughs> I would have immediately been like, I'm just very light skinned. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what you should have done. My playbook. Yeah, I feel like that wouldn't work for me. You know? <laughs> he was like, so, unfortunately, <laughs> this time I couldn't use that one. So at one point, he looks over. He, so he's talking to everybody. He's like, look to your name and say, black man, we got a problem. He's like, oh, excuse me, sir. You, I. 
hope that you have a blessed day. <laughs> so I got to like, I look over, like me and this dude, we look at each other. I was like, yeah, hey, <laughs> hi. <laughs> like, hey, hey, bro. Tip in the middle of it like this, yo, you guys don't got to say it to me. It's okay. I, this is I think y'all got a problem, <laughs> This is fucked up. That reminds me of my friend Beatrice. She's Taiwanese. And one time she got pulled over while I was in the car and she didn't have her like license on her. She wasn't supposed to be driving people. We were like 16. And she turns, she gets pulled over by police. She immediately just starts speaking Taiwanese to the dude. And I was like, well, bitch, wow, are we friends. Cause we don't, I don't, mm. And it was oh. like, oh my God, you know? And she was trying was, to do that. I don't speak English. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm in the car with her, and they're like, like well, who the fuck is she? And I, I clean the house. Like, What's up? You know? I was trying to uh, rob her. Like, oh, my God. It was so bad. But they let us go. They were like, go back to school. Oh, my God. 16. Mm -hmm. Look at you breaking laws at such a young age. Rock and roll, man. That was before I found God. <laughs> I say that about all the shit I did in college. Be like, remember that? Remember that was before and I found a law. I grew up in Pasadena, California. Oh, okay. And and you weren't, um, and were you raised religiously as all, at all? No, I, I was kind of raised how you were raised. My mom kind of has the same mindset as you in terms of like, she doesn't really care for religion. Like she does not like organized religion at all. Yeah. It's because, so she's very light skinned and the, they would always clown on her for being like not black enough. And one time she was clapping and she wasn't paying attention and she clapped off the B. Oh, no. And this black lady turned to her and said, see, we knew you were white because you ain't got no rhythm. Oh, and she was scarred for life. No. And so that's why mom don't like the church. That's um, hilarious. She's like, I got tons of rhythm. Yeah. That's and she does. She's a great dancer. <laughs> she parties the all the time. She did, She's amazing. She dances better than me. She was doing Soldier Boy the other day. Johnny I was like, I don't even remember that. What the heck? But anyway, um, and my dad, he's like, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> he's a uh. <laughs> Pretty much. And, but my dad, he's super chill. Like my dad, he always says like you know the world's gonna keep moving forward with or without me so i might as well like you know be loving and stuff like oh. i remember when people were saying oh my god that's so gay he like sat us down and was like we're not gonna do this as a black family and denigrate oh, wow. gay people and we're like dad that's gay and like <laughs> this is a gay conversation and like we were really messed up like he announced that he had prostate cancer and we were like dad he's like you know, it's, I'm gonna be okay. I'm like, Dad, that's gay. <laughs> <laughs> was just, we were horrible. He probably children. looking at him like, <laughs> again, really? that was before I found a law. So, and I was also like maybe 12. Um, How else would you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> I could get a check, oh, gay boy. How'd yeah. <laughs> you get a finger up your no. butt, gay boy? Prostate cancer checks are not gay unless at you all. want them to be. They're also not fun. <laughs> no. I can't imagine. Get yourself checked out, guys. Yeah, no, dude. Doctor. Yeah. And it, yeah. It's a second. It's and if you have a vagina, China, go to get some pap smears in 2020. Yeah. You know, we're going to do sexual health in yeah. 2020. All that. All that. Y'all supposed to do that like once a year, right? Yeah. 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 I, I had, I've only had one ever prostate exam ever in my whole life. And you know, you normally don't have to do it uh, till you're older. Mm -hmm. But um, this doctor just thought you're I was back. cute. I'm I'm so it's it's time for, no. it's 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 time for some malpractice. It was. <laughs> yes. I uh, need to make sure I'm okay. It was, it was, it was for, like, I had like a little bit of blood in my urine. So he, he wanted to investigate for whatever reason like, you, you, you trying to be team early <laughs> you trying to be team early out here I Try got you it. he's like alright I'll see you uh, next year you want to be ahead of the game yeah. sweet thing uh -huh. um, but it's literally like it's crazy because I feel like <laughs> you ever had your prostate examined no it's crazy bro like I feel like <laughs> Because because he had me bend over, right? And I literally feel like he took a glob of lube in his hand mm -hmm. and like Shit. hurled it at my asshole. Because I just felt a <laughs> splash. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know? yeah. That, was, that, was, that was a loogie, though. <laughs> Tim from now is like, all right, babe, like, let's But you know. Uh, I, I get it. I get it. So I used to work at Planned Parenthood. And uh -huh. we would, like, Planned Parenthood does prostate exams. And yeah. I feel like they're a lot more advanced when it comes to doing stuff. Because, mm -hmm. like, they've been doing pap smears the same way for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And that's horrible because I feel like we should have have some technological advancement. There gotta be something yeah. instead of you know. Like we gotta like you know like we can like like Elon Musk get on it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> gonna make that ugly ass truck. You know something. Make something. You know, something <laughs> make something, you know some, like new like they didn't make a tunnel. Oh, he but didn't make do. a truck. The, the window ain't bulletproof. We saw that. You know? Yeah. No. He needs to. Maybe not him. Maybe yeah. somebody else. <laughs> but don't like the stirrups with the with the feet in. No. Yeah. I, it's totally, really I totally clinical. love feeling like hey everybody. You see that light? That's what's shining in you. How how else can it happen? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but I feel like there are scientists out there. Like, there's a lot of stuff that needs Drones. to happen in the medical establishment. Like, for example, the pelvic exam they give you, like, they give you, um, like, to we would demonstrate, like, how IUD works or how tampons work on these, like, pelvic models. They would only have white. Like, they only had peach color. And I was like, why is there not 
brown. Like, what the heck, you know? And then but, like, what do you care? And it's like, <laughs> <color>. <laughs> representation matters, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, no, there's a lot of things to work on. But I feel like if you want to get a prostate exam and you're listening to this and you're freaked out, like, definitely head over to Planned Parenthood. It's a half three. a second, bro. It's a half a second. They, they, they lob the lube at your asshole, and then it's a count to three, and then it's a... It's a, it's like, Whoa! just don't tense up. I feel like if you don't tense up, it'll be a You'll smoother, be a smoother But my process. dad is now cancer free, which is great. Yay. Um, but yeah, like that's, that can be something that takes you out, but it doesn't have to, cause you can be proactive. But totally. as you can tell, anytime health things come up, I'm like, let me put my Planned Parenthood hijab on <laughs> and get hey. ready to talk about it. You know? Excuse me, I worked at Planned Parenthood. <laughs> What's your problem, man? Of course, we I was in on... communications yeah. and I had no exam. We needed you on the last episode. Oh, yeah, we, we did. We needed some help on that one. Hey, man, good for you. Planned Parenthood is, uh, you know, it's important oh, out yeah. in these streets. When I started working there, my mom was like, oh, man, I had an abortion there one time. And I was like, this is the first, what? <laughs> She's like, yeah, you would have had a sister about five years older than you. I was like, wow, mom. Wow. So that's when she decided to tell me. Oh. But... <laughs> Yeah, it brought us closer together. But working there was real stressful because people do not like when folks have control over their bodies. Mm. They do not like it. And I was working in the South. Oh. Mm. oh. What part? Louisiana. All of the South. Oh, I was I was Whoa. in 10 Southern states doing communications. And it was like, oh. <laughs> Damn, We son. struggle out here in California. I can only imagine. It's definitely, it's definitely a little different out there, yeah, in terms of, uh, you know, belief systems everything. and everything. 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 The food's better. Oh, I was just going to say the uh, huh? shrimp etouffee, crawfish etouffee. Oh. You Hop missed in. the gumbo party my I, mom I, had I last say night. All the food, okay. but the, the you know the okay. crawfish. Got and it. The, yeah. I was what, like, you gotta. Uh... What were you saying about the gumbo? My mom had a gumbo party last night Ooh. where she had like the pans of rice. I think I, I I don't know if I invited you, but you are welcome to come to the next one. Sounded like a no. <laughs> you invited me to your book release. Yes, my book release. We gonna have the same food, but my mom had like hella crab in there. Like people were like fighting over each other to get food, and my mom made beignets because oh, my family's from Louisiana. Mm. She hooked it up, and Ooh. people were like like my friend from Malaysia. He was like, I've never had this before. Oh my gosh, this is so good. That's actually a pretty good impression. Um, <laughs> and so it was a really nice time because food just brings people together. Oh, yeah. yeah. Facts. Goals in life. Uh, hey, I could go for some crawfish right now. Mm, that sounds yeah. good. Okay. Is, some is, uh, do you, uh, you, you don't, is there anything you don't eat besides pork? Alcohol. Oh, yeah. 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 You said pork, no alcohol. But everything else is fair game. Yeah, honestly, because I had like snails in when I was in France, and I was definitely like, I'm not going to eat snails. And then like snails were presented, and I was like, I'm going to eat these. It's all good. I mean, it's I learned all something just, new about myself. It's just all it's covered in butter and garlic and stuff. It's yeah, like, it could be anything. But I really love oysters. Oysters are like my mm. thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. We like food. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> um. No. Uh, where can we get your book? You get my book um, in all stores. If you just type in Blair Money or like Black History Month book, you can check it out. Because this is like, no, <laughs> it's only this one. Um, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it at your local bookstore, however you want to get. Do not bootleg my book, please. <laughs> because my other book, my first book got bootlegged and it was like a week after it came out. And I was like, y'all broke motherfucker. <laughs> hey, how many books do you have two two yeah okay when did you write your first book i wrote my first book in 2017 and then lavar burton from reading rainbow yeah. like put me on on twitter and was like somebody published this woman's book and i was like thank you LeVar that's an ultimate shout out wow. no it was yeah. great and then like okay yeah. yeah. like, just take a look it's yeah. in a book it's reading it's rainbow, rainbow. Mm -hmm. ah, i love that so much that was adorable. <laughs> but yeah, and so I wanted him to do the audiobook for this book, mm. but he was unavailable and I was devastated. Mm. I had like dressed up for, as uh, Jordy LaForge from Star Trek yeah. for Comic Con. It was like the thing. Um, and then he couldn't do it last minute. But guess who's doing it? You know who's doing I it. Know. Kevin Hart. No. Ah, no. Better. <laughs> do you remember that song, Chocolate Rain? Oh my God. Tease on day. Tease on day. day. <laughs> on day. Us, feel the pain Chocolate we know Rain. <laughs> People forget that Tay's Tay's black. Uh, because his hair. Yeah, they forget that Tay's on day is black. He got a conk. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was talking to Natural when I saw him. Oh, what? Yeah, he did. It, he did the audio book. He recorded it recently. Y'all should have him. He on did the it podcast. just for that. We should bring Tay. Let me here. pick this out so I can do this. <laughs> So my book's going to be read. And people were asking me, like, Blair, why aren't you doing your own audiobook? And I was like, because I have a white voice. And I want a black voice to read my book. But your voice is adorable. Thank you. But, like, you, I can't be like, lynchings were a common issue. <laughs> They're like, oh, my goodness. What page is that? You Don't know? make me laugh at lynching. <laughs> the CIA killed Malcolm X. <laughs> you know, like, it's not the right vibe. But I feel like, you know, like, 
this is Tay's on day. Yeah. You know, like Chocolate Rain was about racism and poverty. Yeah, right, right. It's a great, you know, but I was watching a YouTube retrospective about like, where are they now and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I went to look at his Twitter and he was following me. And I was like, I'm going to slide in these DMs yeah. right but, now. Mm-hmm. We sent him a proposal. He said yes. And, you know, yeah, he's going to be at the book release party. I was hoping we'd go on a date. But <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. No, I think he's happily relationship. Is he, is he? I think so. Happily think relationship. So. I like that no. term. <laughs> What? I think he might Look be. Look here, Rick. Like, Rick would be first one. Mm-mm, I don't believe it. Nah, nah, take me cheating. <laughs> he out here. <laughs> you know, it's like that. Everybody wants the the nerdy folks now. Like I was one of those people who was real nerdy growing up, and all of a sudden we became attractive. Like that was nice. You know what I mean? Like we used to sit in the library playing Pokemon on DSs, and we would all have like the, like the little Bluetooth connection go between it. And I'm in a relationship, so you know, there's <laughs> hey, somebody. For I was everybody. I was in marching band, so I yeah, was, I wore I was, a cummerbund. I was a vice president of drama club. Yeah. I was cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was so cool. You had green eyes. You didn't have no. Nah, no, there are no pictures of me at the age of fourteen because I was not cute. So that had my year. I put my time in. And I'm good now. There's sometimes I have my niece is like my twin, and I'll be looking at her. Sometimes I'll be like, "Baby, junior high is gonna be rough, but I promise you, it's you gonna get better." Yeah. I just be looking at her like, "Oh my girl, oh it's gonna be rough. <laughs> it's okay." Well, um, is there anything you wanna leave us with before we kick you out of here? You don't want to go. I see it. You want to stay. But I gotta go right now, and I'll be back before you know it. No, I feel like I, I like people want me to say like some profound shit. Cause, like my historian, no, Black no, Lives no, Matter no, stuff. Okay? Do so I'm gonna tell no, you no, 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 no. in 2020 to replace your smoke detector filters to uh, lotion <laughs> your elbows. Oh, lotion and to elbows. stay hydrated. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, hey, thanks for coming to the show. Give it Thank up you for having me. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for coming through. And, um, Go ahead and have some premarital sex because God said it's fine. You heard it here first, and she's the only woke, woke person we've ever had on the show. Yeah, so we just <laughs> nope, didn't have it. Nope. Thank you for watching No Chase Podcast. I'm Timothy Alghetto. I'm Ricky Shep. And I'm Nikki Blades. Peace, bitches. Bye. The royal penis is clean, your highness. Thank you. King shit.